you're getting ready to hear a message from one of our Sunday experiences at Hope Church. But before you do that, click the subscribe button. That way, you can stay up to date with all of our content and every video that we drop each week. Enjoy the message.
the morning of shame. I'm good, say y'all.
Good morning, Hope Church, and man, I can't tell you thank you enough for tuning in. So glad that you're with us today. Uh, thank God for the praise and the worship. We are so blessed here at Hope Church uh, just, to, just to have the gifts that are in this house and uh, the gifts that uh, just continually, continually lead us in worship every single week. And then, of course, I'm so thankful for your giving as a church. We we come around Uncommon Giving every single week, and we, we talk about it every single week because it's so important and it's so valuable and so critical to where this church community is going. And so if you're a first-time viewer, never tuned in before, this is your first time clicking on Hope Church. We're glad that you're here. Let us know that this is your first time. We want to say hello and just tell you thanks for watching. But we got something ha happening that's really exciting coming up, and we actually call it something. It's called a first fruit offering, and that's coming up. We moved it to the first Sunday in February. So I hope you're preparing your first fruit offering, which is what we do every single year at the beginning of the year. We put back an offering. We put back a certain amount to prepare to give. And it's something that's over and above our normal tithes and offerings. So I pray you're doing that. Why do we need to give a first fruit offering? Why is it so important? Well, you just heard from some great people on why that's important. Well, it helps us do things like this. It helps us come to you through technology. You know, Hope Church, we're always trying to push the envelope with what equipment we have and how to better present the gospel to you. Well, first fruit, this year's first fruit offering is going to help us do that. That. It's going to help us get uh, better quality uh, production equipment that's necessary to continue to further the gospel around the world. I know that might not mean some things to some people, but I know it means a whole lot to me. It's something that's big on my heart and our church's heart to continually put the gospel out with excellence and with great quality. And, you know, technology is not cheap. And so we want to continually give because it allows us to continue to take the value and the quality up of what we're doing here at Hope Church around the globe. So your first fruit offering, part of it is going to help us get better cameras, get better uh, equipment, get better uh, things that just help us uh, lead people to Jesus no matter the cost through technology. And so, and there's many other things that are going to be able to be done through this offering. So that's why it's so important to give, why it's so important for you to continually pray and say, God, what would you have me give in this offering? It's so important. So I thank you for your giving, and I'm so thankful that you're here today. Uh, I got a word for you. I believe it's going to uh, uh, do what the Word of God always does and minister to us. And I think it's a, a definitely a, an on-time message, I do believe. And so, again, if you're joining us, this is a, a story we've been going through for the last couple of weeks since the uh, January started. And it's the story of a young man named Joseph in the Bible in Genesis. Now, he's been going through his life. And now we're in Genesis 41. Last week, we, we left off. Joseph was in prison. Joseph was um, in prison. And he was over the prison, in fact. But he was a prisoner. But he had been made prison warden. Why? Because of how he worked and how he kept up the prison. And so he was put in charge of the prison. And so, remember, Pharaoh's, two of Pharaoh's workers came in. In, and they were thrown in prison, and Joseph interpreted their dreams. Well, one of the workers got out and went back to work for Pharaoh. He was the butler for Pharaoh. And so Joseph said, when you get out of prison, remember me. Show kindness to me. And that's where we left off. This butler got out of prison, but the Bible says he forgot about Joseph. And that's where we're picking up the story in Genesis 41. I want you to read this, this one verse in Genesis 41, and we'll look at some more. Genesis 41, verse number 1. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. That's, the, that's the, one of the most critical parts of the story. At the end of two full years, Pharaoh had a dream. Who's Pharaoh? He's the, the most uh, authoritative figure in the, in the uh, land at this time. He's the man in charge. He is the head guy of the country. And it says, at the end of two full years, what, when is this time period? From the time the butler got out of prison to this point of Pharaoh having a dream, two full years have passed. And Pharaoh has a dream. And he has this dream, and, 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 and of course, I'm not going to read the entire dream. You can see it there in the story. But he has this dream of, of seven cows coming up out of the river that were healthy and fat and eating. And then the seven other cows came out of the river that were thin and, and, and really just like skeletons and just really uh, unhealthy. And they, they came out of the river. And then he had another dream about seven heads of grain. 
and, and seven bad heads of grain. And really, that was the dream of what was to come, which you're going to see here in a minute. And Joseph, Joseph, the Bible says, spent two more years in prison because the butler forgot about it. The butler forgot about it. And that's the part I want to key in on today. I want to key in on this topic called another yes. Another yes. I believe there's some people watching today who need to give God another yes. You're about to quit, about to fold it up, about to throw in the towel, but it's time to give him another yes. Can you imagine Joseph, if you don't know the story, had a dream at 17 that he would one day, his family would all submit to him as, as this, uh, this leader, this ruler, that they would come and bow down to him and need him for help. At 17, he has this, and then he goes and is sold into slavery, and, and then he's working for Potiphar, and then he gets framed, and then he gets thrown in prison. And then he has one glimmer of hope in this time where the butler who worked for Pharaoh, needed help interpreting his own dream, and Joseph interpreted his dream. Remember the prison last week, we talked about how the prison was an atmosphere. It was an environment. It was an environment that represent, represented Joseph's development and his gifting because the right atmospheres don't just display your gift, they develop your gift. And Joseph's gift has developed from just dreamer to interpreter. And he helped the butler out this way. He helped the butler interpret his dream. And the butler went back into a successful place, but he forgot about Joseph. I want you to kind of put yourself in Joseph's place right now. I want you to think about how Joseph must be feeling that he thinks this butler is going to get out of prison and immediately go and tell Pharaoh that he needs to get this young Hebrew boy out of prison. I can't imagine the hope that he has. I can't imagine the expectation he has that, man, tomorrow's going to be the day. I'm getting out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this place. I've been here long enough. And just when he thinks he's going to get out, two full years pass by. Two full years. He doesn't leave the next day. He stays for another two years. And this is what hit me is that every day for those two full years, Joseph had to keep giving God another yes. Every day for those two full years in that prison, Joseph had to keep giving God another yes. Yes, he had to keep waking up every day and keep saying yes to who God had made him to be. Because just because the time got extended did not mean Joseph was disqualified from what he was purposed to do. Just because the time in Joseph's mind and in Joseph's situation was lengthened in the prison doesn't mean he was disqualified from what he was purposed to do in the first place. You, so, so when you have to give God another yes, and when you're in a situation like Joseph, when it doesn't look like it's changing, when it doesn't look like that anything is moving for you, you have to keep waking up every day and giving God another yes. Somebody listen to me who's watching right now. You need to understand that it might not be working the way you want it to work right now. And it might look like nothing is working in your favor. In fact, you might feel like, Joseph, that not only have you been forgotten, but you have feel like you have been forsaken. You feel like you've been forsaken. But can I encourage you today to give God another yes? I don't know what you need to give God another yes to. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your finances, not giving up on it. Maybe it's your health and give God another yes. Maybe it's relationships. You need to give God another yes. Give another yes. Keep staying committed. Keep staying open to what he's doing in your life, even though it looks like the total opposite. It might not look like God is working something right now, but I have learned and I've lived long enough to know that when it looks like nothing is going on for me and in my favor, that's when God is doing some of his best work, not only around you, but in you. Can I tell you that when you give God another yes, you are giving yourself over to more development. You're giving yourself over to more shaping and more sharpening in the spirit. You actually mature in a way that, that you could not have matured had you just given up and said, you know what, I'm going to stay in this prison for the rest of my life. I'm done. I'm not going to hope for anything greater. Give God another yes today. Somebody type yes in the comments because you need to give him another one. 
It requires it. It requires it. And if you're going to fulfill your purpose, and if you're ever going to fulfill the ultimate destiny in your life and live out purpose that God has for you, it will require a daily yes. Joseph had to give God another yes. Two years sitting there wondering what's happening, wondering, am I ever going to get out of this? Wondering, is it ever going to change and work out for me? This is why I want to remind you that you can't put your hope in man. Because watch this. If your hope is tied to man, listen to me. If your hope is tied to man, when man disappoints you, because man will disappoint you, when man lets you down, because man will let you down, when man does all of those things, your hope goes with it. Because your hope isn't in the right place. But when your hope is in the right place, who is Jesus Christ, man can let you down. Man can forget about you. Man can treat you wrong. Man can, can do all the things that, that, that uh, are contrary to what you believe in. But when your hope is in Christ Jesus, you have the ability to keep giving God a yes, even though it looks like you're in a season of no. Even when it looks like you're surrounded by no, you can keep giving God a yes because your hope is not tied to what you see. That's not hope at all if you have to hope for what you see. No, hope is in what we can't see. And so we want to put our hope in Christ Jesus because when our hope is in Christ Jesus, things can happen around us that are, that are tough, that are hard, that are frustrating. And man can let us down, man can forget, man can do wrong, but I'm telling you, when you put your hope in Christ Jesus, your hope cannot be shaken. You can give God another yes today because of where you chose to place your hope. In fact, watch this. In the Bible, in Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 5, it says, And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation, watch this, produces something. It produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The author of Romans says we glory in tribulation because tribulation produces for us perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character is producing hope. So when I'm able to give God another yes, that is a result of where I've chosen to place my hope. My question for you today is where have you placed your hope at? There's, there's many people watching this right now. Some of you are, are believers in Jesus Christ. There's some people watching this who, who you don't know what you believe, and you've chosen to put your hope in man. There's some people who are Christians today. You've put your hope in man. You've put your hope in man-made systems and forgotten about the one that you need to keep your hope tied to. And when that happens, when we put our hope in the wrong places and we put our hope in the wrong people, when those things and those people let us down and disappoint us and frustrate us and don't do what we want them to do, our hope goes with it. Why? Because we chose not to put our hope where it belongs, which is in Christ Jesus. But I choose today to put my hope in Christ because I need to be able to give him another yes when I'm surrounded by an atmosphere of no. The people of God, the kingdom of God, we need to be people who are the yes in the earth. We need to be the yes people in the earth, the people that say yes to God's will and yes to God's way. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that the promises of God are yes and amen. The promises of God. See, I'm able to give God another yes every single day, no matter what's going, across, going on across the landscape of the world, that my hope is in him because I know his promises are yes and amen. That's where my hope is at. My hope is in, his, is in his promises. My hope is not in what people can do for me. My hope is already in what Christ has already done for me. That's why I'm able to give him another yes. And some of us watching this today, we need to give God another yes. I'm not talking about your political party giving them a yes. I'm not talking about what your, your family says. I'm not talking about all those things. I'm not talking about what your money says. You need to give God another yes. 
You need to give God another yes because some of us have allowed our yes to wane in the storm. We've allowed our yes to fall victim to what society says and what people are trying to persuade us to do. No, my hope is in Christ. Therefore, I can give him another yes because he never moves. He never is shaken. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I can give him another yes today. I can give him another yes. Joseph had to give God another yes every single day for those two years in that prison. He had to. Had he put his hope, now yes, he was, he was excited, I'm sure, and he was believing that his butler was going to get him out soon by a recommendation of Pharaoh, but it didn't happen that way. The butler let him down. But Joseph's hope, if it was tied to the butler getting him out, his hope would have been in man. But Joseph was able to give God another yes. You know how I know? Because the story goes on. Look at verse number 8 in Genesis 41. After Pharaoh has this dream, the Bible says it came to pass in the morning after the Pharaoh had woke up from this dream. It says his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams. But there was no one who could interpret the dream for Pharaoh. Nobody could solve this problem for Pharaoh. Hmm. Then, verse 9, the chief butler spoke to the Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults this day. Watch this. The, the butler who was in prison with Joseph now all of a sudden remembers that there is a young Hebrew boy in prison who's able to solve the problem that Pharaoh is experiencing. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. When Pharaoh the butler said, remember when you were angry with me, you threw me in prison, and, 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 and in prison, me and the baker, we had a dream, and there was a young Hebrew boy who was able to interpret the dream for us. And in verse 13, the butler tells Pharaoh, and it came to pass just as he interpreted it for us, so it happened, and he restored me to my office. And so the butler's telling Pharaoh that, what you did for me, how you pulled me out of prison and restored me back to my position, that was the result of an interpretation told by this young Hebrew boy. We need to bring him out. And the Bible says in verse 14 that the Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him out of the dungeon quickly. It didn't take but a moment for Pharaoh to realize that his solution was within his vicinity. And he went and got Joseph out of prison. It says he shaved him, and he cleaned him up, and he put some clothes on him. And he brought Joseph to himself, and he said this in verse 15. Watch this. He said, I have had a dream, and there is no one, no one who can interpret it. Watch this. But I have heard it said of you. I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. Don't miss that. I have heard it said of you. Because Joseph kept giving God another yes, because he didn't quit while he was in a place he didn't want to be in, because he didn't stop giving God a yes, he, he was able to uh, keep going through a hard season. And because he kept giving God a yes, he was able to be in the place where he needed to be when promotion showed up. That's what another yes will do for you. When you keep giving God another yes when you want to stop, when you keep giving God another yes when you want to just throw in the towel, when you keep giving him another yes, you will be in the position that you need to be in when promotion shows up to find you. I believe there's many people that, that if you'll just keep giving God another yes, and this isn't false hope, this isn't some, some, some flaky, fruity thing I'm trying to pump you up with and, and emotionalism. I'm telling you the truth, that I've seen it and I've lived it, that when you keep giving God another yes, just hold on, that promotion finds you because you stay in the place. You stay in the place and you're faithful to that place, even though it looks like a prison, like Joseph, even though it looked like a place he didn't want to be in, he kept remaining faithful and he didn't let a season of no keep him from giving a yes. Where are you at with that today? Are you, are you, do you feel like you're surrounded by no's? That's the time to dig deeper and keep giving God a yes. Keep giving God a yes, because that's how promotion finds you. And Pharaoh found Joseph in the prison because Joseph kept giving God a yes. Mm. Another yes. 
another yes. The Pharaoh found Joseph, and Joseph said this after the Pharaoh said, I've heard it said of you that you can understand a dream and interpret it. Joseph said, it's not in me. It's not going to be me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. It's not going to be me. Watch that. Pharaoh said, I've heard it said of you. Don't you know it matters? It matters your reputation. Your reputation is what communicates, uh, uh, what communicates about you before you show up in a place. Your reputation is what goes before you before you show up in a place. Pharaoh had heard the reputation of Joseph was one of great skilled interpretation. And so Joseph's reputation went before him. Can you imagine if Joseph would have quit in the prison and not interpreted the butler's dream? He would have missed out on an opportunity of, his, of, a, of a new uh, level and new promotion. But because Joseph kept saying yes to God and to his will and to his way, he was able to be promoted at the time that it was ordained for him to happen. Because there is a time that it will take place. It will come to pass. Don't stop saying yes to God. I'm telling you, your yes has a more powerful effect in the spirit than you realize. I know it might not be fun on some days. It might be more challenging some days than others. And you might feel like, why, why, <laughs> why am I experiencing what I'm experiencing? And you don't understand why you keep saying yes to God. But there, there is power in your yes. Something is moving in the spirit when you keep saying yes to God. And Joseph kept saying yes, and the Pharaoh was able to find him. There's three, three quick things I want to give you that I believe that we need to keep saying yes to, that we need to keep saying yes to God. We need to keep giving God another yes in just a few areas. There's many more than this, but I just want to give you a few. I think the first area that you and I and believers across the world and everybody watching this, we need to give God another yes in our character. We need to give God another yes in our character. Our character. We have to be developed in our character. Joseph has great character. He was a man of great character. We've seen it through how he was done wrong by not only his brothers, but Potiphar's wife and he still allowed his character to help him walk through being wronged, being done wrong, his character. I think the people of God, we need to be people who give God another yes in our character. Sometimes we're so quick to get into the next season, into the better place, into the, the promotion and everything that we lack the character necessary to keep us there. Because why would God elevate you to a place if your character was not able to sustain it? Joseph had to have the right character, and evidently he needed those two extra years in prison because those two extra years in prison were doing something in him. It was teaching him something. It was, it was causing him to understand the power of patience and understanding that there are some things I want right now that I don't need right now because there are some things some of us want right now that we don't necessarily need, and they might not be bad things. It's just they're not the right things for us right now, not saying that they won't be necessary in the future they're just not needed for you right now what's needed for you right now is development it's shaping it's sharpening it's uh, uh listening to the voice of god it's growing and that one of the greatest things god can do for us is not elevate us too quickly but in the process of being elevated we have to keep giving god a yes watch this your character your character proves what problems you can be trusted with. Hear me. Your character proves what problems you can be trusted with. Because think about this. Joseph has been trusted by the most powerful man in the world at the time, the Pharaoh, to come and interpret the dream. Pharaoh's problem, watch this, Pharaoh's problem required a Joseph solution. The problem that Pharaoh had required 
a Joseph solution. Can I tell you that there are some problems that require your presence? Don't miss this today. There are some problems that require your presence. What I'm telling you is there are some problems that you're called to, that you're called to solve. There are some problems that you are called to that are specifically made for you to be a part of because what's in you is needed for the problem at hand. Hear me. You got to hear this with kingdom ears today. You got to hear it with kingdom ears. There are some problems that require your presence, and it's because of how God wired you, how God designed you, how he packaged you, that you are in the problem you are in because, like last week, I'm supposed to be there. Remember that. I need to be in this problem. I'm, I'm supposed to be in this problem because God wired me, he packaged me, he gifted me for such a time as this. Pharaoh's problem required a Joseph solution, and God allowed, only, God allowed all the magicians, all the wise men of Egypt to be ignorant in the area that Joseph knew all about. Isn't that just like God, that he will keep everybody else from bringing the solution, but he's placed it within you? And that's why your character has to be formed. That's why your character has to be forged in the dark spaces and in the hidden places of life. Some of you feel like that you're, you're missing out. You're not missing out. You're just being hidden by God for a specific time because there will come a time. There will come a day when, when people who have the ability to open the doors for you will have problems that only you can solve. That's why you have to keep reminding yourself that you are a solution to a problem. You are a solution to a problem. Joseph was a solution to Pharaoh's problem, but his character needed dealing with. And you want to know how I know his character had been worked on and had been developed? It was the answer that he gave Pharaoh when Pharaoh said, I've heard it said of you, you can interpret dreams. And Joseph said, it's not in me, God's going to give it to you. Isn't that a leap? Watch this. Joseph went from a 17-year-old boy telling his brothers his dreams prematurely in an arrogant kind of way, telling his brothers that they would one day bow down to him, to now, now, standing before the most powerful man on the planet and saying, this isn't going to be me that does it. It's going to be God that reveals it to Pharaoh. His character had been shaped. His character had been shaped. He had been developed in the prison. And right now, I believe that as people of God, we need to be people with godly character. We just don't need to be people who say that we are Christians. That, I believe that the day of just saying I'm a Christian is done. I believe it's put up or shut up time now. You're either going to live like it and walk like it and live out God's kingdom principles and his godly character, or you're not going to have any weight in the spirit. I'm talking to us, church. I'm talking to us because we can no longer, you can't just throw your little Christian meme up on Instagram and social media thinking that's going to cover it. You better know who you are in Christ Jesus. You better know who you are in the kingdom. You better know how, how to operate in the kingdom principles of God. Joseph knew how to do that. The pressure did not get to him. The pressure of the moment did not crush Joseph because his character could sustain him. Who am I talking to? Your character will keep you, and your character will bring you, rather, into places that your resume could not. All because of godly character. Character. He didn't forsake his godly character because of the situation. He didn't forsake his godly character because he lived in Egypt. I, I just, I just, I've come to believe that if some of us, there's some people, there's some, there's some Christians that I've met that I think they wouldn't have worked, wanted to work for Pharaoh because he wasn't a Christian. Let me let that just marinate for a minute. There's some people, I believe, if we lived in Joseph's day, that if Pharaoh came calling to come and interpret the dream, and Pharaoh came calling, and he wanted us to go work for him, some of us wouldn't have did it because Pharaoh 
was a pagan. They didn't believe in Joseph's God, our God, the God of Israel. <laughs> and we missed the whole point. We missed the whole point that it's our godly character that's needed in, in days like we're living in. It was Joseph's godly character that was needed in the days that he was living in. There's a famine that was about to approach in Egypt, and it was Joseph's godly character that was able to keep the whole world fed because of his godly character, because he kept saying yes. When you keep saying yes to God, there is a character that gets developed in you. I want to be the kind of person and the kind of man that keeps saying yes to God in a way that darkness, even though, even though it's a, it's a darkness, that's where I'm meant to be because I'm light. Jesus said that, that we are a city set on a hill. A city, think about that, a city set on a hill. In other words, it's it's visible from all directions. A city set on a hill. It's visible from all directions. I can see it. It stands out. I'm not trying to, to hide. I'm not trying to live in fear. I want the godly character in me to shine so that those who don't know him will come and look at my life and say, there's something in you that is needed. There's something in you that is necessary for my problem. It's godly character. We don't, need, we don't need Christians bickering back and forth at one another. You think the world finds that attractive? Man, all those Christians do is talk about one another and, and call each other out on Facebook. All they do is just argue and bicker and fight, and it's enough. Like, are we children? Are we going to be mature? Are some of us ready for the moments at hand? Our character will tell us. Our character will tell us. We're going to find out if we believe what we say we believe. Our character, we got to give another yes to our character. Joseph did that. But I think God, that my God keeps me in places to develop, to test my character so that whenever my name is called, I'm ready for the moment. Because you do not know who's getting ready and has the ability to open the door for your next step. And it's your character that's going to cause you to walk through into that, that place and keep you there as an effective witness for Christ Jesus. And when you allow God to work on your character, hear me, when you allow God to work on your character, you become, you become a place that can be trusted, a place that is safe. It's your character. The next thing that we need to give another yes to is our competence. We need to give God another yes to our character. We need to give God another yes in our competence our competence are we able to do more than just shout are we able to fulfill the work at hand because watch this after joseph was pulled up out of the prison and pharaoh began to tell him his dream joseph was immediately able to be effective because he was competent in his skill of interpretation so not only was he developed in his character, but now he is competent. The Bible says, watch this, he told Pharaoh in verse 25, he said, Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. And he begins to interpret the dream for Pharaoh. He says, these seven healthy cows, that means there's seven healthy years ahead of us. The seven skinny cows, that means there's seven years of famine coming. And you actually had uh, another dream about the heads of grain because God wanted to establish the thing. And here's what we need to do. And he goes, watch, he not only tell, can tell Pharaoh what the dream means, he starts giving instruction on what needs to happen. He starts giving instruction on what needs to happen. So not only, not only was Joseph sincere and had the right heart, but Joseph was also skilled and had the right ability. 
Not only was he sincere and had the right heart, Joseph was also skilled and had the right ability because after he interprets the dream, he starts telling Pharaoh, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over all the land. And then he says, here's what you need to do also. Appoint officers to collect one-fifth the produce of the land in the seven plentiful years. So he starts giving instruction to the most powerful man on the planet and says, here's what we need to do. You need to start putting back food because we don't just need to go and, 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 and eat up all the food during the good years just simply because it's good. We need to get ready for these bad years because those are going to be some challenging times. Hear me. Joseph is teaching us a principle that what another yes can do when you're committed and you have godly character and you have competence, it teaches us that, that we can handle the high seasons well. If we can handle the high seasons, the good seasons well, it sets us, sets us up to manage, to manage the bad seasons well. See, how we handle our good seasons and how we manage our good seasons can determine how we manage our bad seasons, our tough seasons, because we all have good and bad seasons. How we handle what's happening now, how we handle what's going on in the earth now can determine how we handle what's next. How we handle our good season. See, Joseph wouldn't have been the kind of guy that would went straight to the mall with his stimulus check and just spent it all. Joseph would have been saying, hey, we need to put back. We need to get ready. We need to put some things back. We need to make sure we're ready for what is to come. Because I know that there's good seasons and there's bad seasons. And I want to manage my good seasons well because I don't know what's ahead, but I want to be prepared for it. That's competence. Competence gives, you, competence gives you the skill. It gives you the skill to prepare for tough seasons while, even while, everything seems to be good. Competence gives you the ability to do that. And Joseph has competence. He's able to take what they have at the present and prepare for it for the future. Joseph has competence. He's, he's skilled in it. He's, he's, he understands that he was made for this moment and everything, everything he has done to prepare for this moment, he is able to pull on in this moment. We've said it before, but it's worth saying again that preparation is a prophetic act because it prepares you. You, you are telling your future, I'm getting ready for you. I'm getting ready for what's ahead. Even though it's not materialized, I'm getting ready for it because I know it's coming, so I'm going to act today to prepare for my tomorrow how are you doing that that's part of our competence preparing today for what's to come tomorrow it's called wisdom stewardship joseph has the ability to manage what's in his hands because he's not just sincere in his heart but he's also skillful in his hands awareness watch this because i know there's some people watching that you know you're called. You know you're called to do something great in a specific arena in the business world and maybe in arts and entertainment, you know, maybe in the educational system. But can I tell you, an awareness of your calling doesn't mean a readiness to execute it. An awareness of your calling, meaning you know what you're called to do, doesn't automatically mean you're ready to execute it at that moment. God will take you through seasons, he will take you through shifts, and he will take you through, through transitions just for the sole purpose of developing you more in different roles, in different roles to prepare you for what you were put on the earth to do. So you may know what you're called to do now, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're ready to execute it. Joseph was ready to execute it because he gave God another yes all those years. He was 17 when he had this dream. Now he's 30. He's 30, and watch this. The Pharaoh, after he hears Joseph's interpretation and he hears jo Joseph's direction, verse 37, it said, so the advi advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of his, all of his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one discerning and wise as you. And he says, you shall be over my house. 
You shall be over my house, and my people shall be ruled according to your word. And he said to Joseph, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Joseph goes from the prison to working for Pharaoh in a moment. You know why? Because he kept giving God another yes. When you keep giving God another yes, it prepares you for your destiny. Pharaoh put him over the whole country. I want you to think about this. Pharaoh put Joseph over the whole country. And if you look down Joseph's resume, he has no business running the country. He is a prisoner. But you know what that tells me? That while he was in the prison, he was meant to work for Pharaoh. He was already a prime minister in prison. It, the time hadn't come yet for him to be put in the position, but he was already meant for it. Can I tell you, you have such greatness in you, you have such ability in you that is going to surprise you, it is going to shock you and other people when God begins to open up those doors, when he begins to move you into those places and to those positions. Don't forget that you were that all along. It just took time for you to get to that place. Stop looking at what you have on the inside of you as not something that's valuable and something that's not treasured and something that's not uh, powerful in the hands of God. Joseph was a prime minister, but it took two years for Pharaoh to have a dream for him to need what Joseph had. But Joseph kept giving him, giving God another yes. Hear me, somebody needs to keep giving God a yes today because it could be the difference maker. It could be the difference maker on how you live out your purpose and your destiny. Pharaoh is taking advice. He promotes Joseph. He promotes Joseph to the position of second in command of the whole country. Watch this. And all he's done up to this point is give Pharaoh an interpretation of the dream and advice on what to do. None of what Joseph said has been proven that it will work. Think about this. Joseph don't have the resume for what Pharaoh needs, but yet somehow, some way, he is put into this position immediately. The Bible says the Pharaoh takes a ring and he puts it on Joseph's finger and he puts fine linen on Joseph and he gives Joseph a gold chain. It signifies his authority and now it signifies whose house he belongs to. And he hasn't, none of what Joseph has said has come to pass. It's all just wisdom and advice and preparation. That's how much Pharaoh believed in what Joseph said because he says, there's no one here that has the Spirit of God in him. And Pharaoh discerned, even though Pharaoh didn't know God, even though Pharaoh was, was, didn't believe what Joseph believed, he still saw that God was with him, just like Potiphar, just like the prison guard, and, and just like everybody else saw that Joseph had something on his life, even though they couldn't verbalize it or explain it. Hear me, can I tell you that there, there are people who don't believe the way that you believe, but they still see something significant in your life, and they can't put their finger on it. But we all know it's the Spirit of God inside of you. You better not forget, hear me, believer, don't forget that you're still a carrier of the, the Spirit of God on the inside of you. That even though in this dark world and these hard times, we are still carriers of the Spirit of God. And the, the final yes that we need to keep saying yes to is our calling. Our calling. We have to keep saying yes to our calling. Don't you forget that you are still kingdom above everything else. I feel this. Don't you forget that you are still kingdom above everything else. That no matter what, what society says, no matter what things transpire, no matter what people say, that I am kingdom First, I'm not right or left. I am up because that's the direction of the kingdom. And we need kingdom people. We need kingdom people in Hope Church. We need kingdom people who know the word of God. We need kingdom people who are going to stay committed to what God says. Kingdom people. 
Joseph was a kingdom person working for Pharaoh now, second in command, but it was his destiny all along, something God had ordained. Are you going to keep giving God another yes, or are you going to stop right where you're at? Are, are you going to allow circumstances to cause you to say no to your calling? Joseph had this calling on his life. From the age of 17 till now, the age of 30, he had this calling on his life. And he kept saying yes. Through all the hardships, through all the hard times, he kept saying yes. Another interesting fact I want to point out, and I'm going to close with this. I'm going to finish with this. You know Joseph was called to do what he's doing for Pharaoh. Because if you look through your life and if you'll pay attention to certain things, you'll see clues along the way of what God has called you to do and what he's put you on the earth to do. And as I look back through Joseph's life, look, he starts out, he is only ever, he has only ever worked for the man or the person who was in charge of everything. Think about this. He has never worked for anybody else below the man in charge. He's always worked for somebody who was the top person in power. When he was a teenager, it was his father. He was favored by his father. He got the special coat of colors. Remember that? He was favored by his father. He worked for Potiphar. Potiphar put him over his whole house, and only he had to report to Potiphar, and that was it. While he was in prison, he only had to work for the, the the head of the prison. He didn't have to report to anybody else. He was over the whole prison and only had to report to the head of the prison. And now he's working for Pharaoh, the man in charge of the whole country. And he now has been given authority and power to oversee all of Egypt. He has been getting trained his whole life for this moment. Here it is. And what came disguised as trouble was really just training for Joseph. His whole life looks like it's been filled with trouble, and it was trouble. But the, the training that God required of him came packaged through trouble. Can I tell you, your trouble can be your training. Joseph experienced trouble from the time he, he was hated by his brothers up until the time he was promoted by Pharaoh. But all of the trouble was just training for his calling. And when we experience trouble, when we experience things that are contrary to what we see in our heart and believe that should be happening, it's actually training because there's a training, there's a forming, and there's a developing happening around the area of your calling if you'll give yourself to it. Because Joseph has been trained for this moment. He don't need to be, he has no resume to run a country, but he's been trained to his whole life because all he's ever known is how to work for powerful men. I wonder what trouble has trained you and is training you even now. What trouble? I mean, look at the, the world globally. What, what about the trouble going on in our world can train us for what's ahead? Train us in our calling. I can tell you this, I'm not going to stop saying yes. I'm not going to quit in the middle of it. I'm going to keep saying yes to godly character, to competence, and to my calling. Because watch this. Once Pharaoh put Joseph in charge, watch this. I'm going to end with this verse. The Bible says in Genesis 41, verse 57, it said, So all the countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all the lands. That might not mean much to some people, but it means a lot to me because Joseph kept saying yes. Watch this. In verse 57, it says the whole world, all countries came to Joseph to buy grain. In other words, in other words, all the world, when they were starving and needed to be fed, came to Joseph. Joseph is a picture of the church. Joseph is a picture of Jesus. Joseph is the picture of you and I. And my question to us, church, is if we stop saying yes to God, where will the world go when they are starving for hope? 
when the world is starving for hope, will they find people who have kept giving God another yes? Because God has called you to feed some people around you. He's called to feed, He's called you to feed some family members. He's called you to feed some co-workers, some classmates, some people you work out with. To, if, if you keep giving him a yes, he'll keep using you. And Joseph kept giving God a yes, and God kept using him to the point the whole known world came to him for food, which is a picture of coming to him for hope and for help. And my question to us today, church, are we going to keep saying yes so that we can keep being used by God? Because the world is starving for hope. The world is starving for help. And are they going to find a church arguing and bickering and at each other's throats? Are they going to find a church that just keeps saying yes to God no matter what man does, no matter what man says, that we're going to keep saying yes to God because we know the church is God's in God's hand and he wants to use it to bring hope to a desperate and hopeless world. I'm going to keep saying yes. And some people today, I want to pray for you. You need to keep, you need to give God another yes. And you're about to say, you know what, I'm done giving God yeses. I've given him yes after yes, and it just don't seem to be working out for me. You don't realize what's on the other side of your next yes. Hear me. You do not realize what's on the other side of your next yes. If that's you, I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for those watching this all over the world who are about ready to say, you know what, this don't even... Why even bother anymore? Why do I even need to keep giving you a yes, God, in my calling and my character? When I could out, act outside of my character and not act Christ-like, I'm about done with that. Today, God, I pray that you would reinvigorate, rejuvenate our yes to you. We recommit our yes to you because we want to be your church. We want to be a church that says yes day after day because we know there's a world that's starving and a world that is hurting and it needs hope. And God, you use your people to bring hope into this world and we want to be used by you, so therefore we give you another yes. I pray you touch our minds, God. People watching this whose minds are, are, are affected, tormented. God, our hearts, people's hearts that are broken, people who are needing something. God, I thank you that you're in that living room right now, in that office space, whoever's watching this, wherever they're watching from, I pray they would sense your presence. And God, you would touch them right where they're at. And I pray our yes today would be strengthened. Now, if you're watching this and you want to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, that's the ultimate yes, to say yes to him. If you want to say yes to Jesus Christ, turn your life around believe in the hope of the world who is Christ Jesus, you can pray this with me today. The one who died on the cross for you, he said yes to you. And he hung on a cross, bleeding and beaten so that you could live your purpose and out your calling. If you want to pray that prayer to say, Jesus, I need you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on a cross for my sins and that you were buried but on the third day, you were resurrected, giving me new life. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. I say yes to you, and I say no to my old life. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer, I want you to text. There's a, a number across the screen here. I want you to text Jesus to that number because we want to hear from you. We want to celebrate with you that the fact that you just said yes to Jesus. The best yes you can give is to Jesus Christ. And guess what? After today, you're going to have to keep giving him a yes. You're going to have to keep giving him a yes. Every day, I have to keep saying yes to God. So why don't you keep saying yes? It's the most powerful yes you can give. And as you keep saying yes to him, no matter what happens, no matter what the atmosphere of your life, no matter what happens around you in our world, if you keep saying yes to God, man, you're going to fulfill everything he put in you to do. Don't quit. Don't give up now. Now is the time we need you to keep saying yes. Well, if you know somebody who's ready to quit, why don't you text them? Why don't you call them? Why don't you tell them, hey, don't stop. Keep giving God another yes and watch what he'll do with that. Watch what he'll do. That's what this world needs. It needs hope right now. It needs hope. It needs to see a church 
that's unified. It needs to see a people that love God and will keep giving him a yes. If this has blessed you, I want you to share this message with somebody. Send it to somebody. I think the world around us needs to hear how important a yes is to character, to confidence, and to our calling, and how that can impact our world around us. Remember, Joseph was able to feed a starving world because of those things. Who's God going to use in your life? Who, who, how's he going to use you to feed some people in your life? Be watching, because every time you give him a yes, he'll use you in some great ways. We really appreciate you watching. Why don't you go ahead and click that share button and share it with a friend so they can enjoy it as well. If you want to find out more information about Hope Church, follow us on social media or go to our website. At our website, you can find out how to get involved, when our next baptisms are, and how you can give and support this ministry financially. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.